My name is Kennedy Faust and I am a junior in high school and I currently go to Hoggard High School which is in Wilmington, North Carolina. The best thing about Christmas to me is spending time with my family and also giving gifts to others, especially those who are in need. I encourage you guys to like this video, comment, let us know what you think about the word, and also share it with your friends. What's going on Rock Fam? It's your big brother Dathan here and I have some really exciting news to share with you. Check it out. On Friday, December the 11th at 7.30 p.m. right here on The Rock Instagram page, we are hosting a cash app giveaway, y'all. What? Yeah, I said it. We are virtually giving away money. All you gotta do is tune in. You know, 2020 has been an interesting year for us all, but through it all, you have been rocking with The Rock heavy, and we wanna take this time to show that appreciation to you. So this is what you gotta do. Get your Cash App accounts ready. Tune in Friday. Bring your good vibes, your good energy, and come as we spend this holiday season together virtually being a blessing to you. We'll see you Friday. Do you know that God is everything? Oh, anybody in here believe that? Just say, God, you're everything. That means he's shelter. He's a friend. When all your friends turn their back and they're nowhere to be found and they ain't picking up the phone, he'll be there. Yeah. He's consistent in all of his ways. So we just want to glorify him this morning. Don't be ashamed right where you are to lift your hands and declare these same sentiments that we say in this house because God is omnipresent. So the same one here is the same one right where you are. So worship with us as we sing this. Sing everything. Everything. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Said life and breath, life and breath. You're everything to me. Everything to You're me. my peace. You're my peace. Do you believe that today? You're everything. You're everything. You're everything. Joy and sorrow. Joy and sorrow. Everything. You're everything. Said hope. Tomorrow. Oh, for tomorrow, you're everything to me. Just you're repeat this. Said life and breath, life and breath. <laughs> you're everything to me. Said life and breath. Oh, he's the very breath. air that we breathe. You're everything to me. Said life. You're everything to me. Said you're, you're my peace. That surpasses all understanding. Everything to me. Said joy and sorrow. Joy and sorrow. You are, you are, you are everything to me. Said hope for tomorrow. Let's go down the list and call him who he is. Right here, declare, Master, Master, sing Savior, Savior. Anybody know it to be a ruler? ruler? Even in these times, people are sick. Healer, Healer. oh, he's a provider. provider. He's a wonderful way.
said everything to me you're everything to me everything you're everything you're everything you're everything you're everything to me you're always there you're everything you're every everything you're everything to me late in the midnight hour when you're holding me i can declare from that place you're everything everything to me whatever i need whatever i need you're everything to me Hey Rock Youth Church, it's Miss Brittany. I hope you all are safe and well. Um, I have the honor this morning to share with you guys in prayer. So if you will take a moment wherever you are to just stop and pause, bow your heads and close your eyes. And let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer first saying thank you and giving you all the honor and all the glory. We know that the only reason we are still here today is because you chose for us to continue your good work and to wake up this morning, Father. So for that, we give you all the glory and all the honor, Father, and just say thank you for allowing us to see another day, Father. Father, we know that there are a lot of things going on around us right now, a lot of things going on in the world, and it's causing some of us to be tired and just be mentally tired. But Father, we know that we can persevere and can continue on because your word says not to grow weary in well-doing, Father. It encourages us to keep going because we know in time we will reap a harvest if we continue forward. So Father, we just say thank you for that. We thank you in advance for that harvest that is coming all of our ways, Father. We know that it is just difficult sometimes for some of us to, to face some of the mental challenges of the coronavirus and things that are different with school and work. But Father, we know that in the end, we will reap a harvest because your word says it's true. So we thank you for that, Father. We thank you in advance. And Father, as we go into this last month of December of 2020, that has been such an interesting year, Father, we know that this, just like all of the other months this year, um, is a month that you created, that you hold in your hands, and we are encouraged by that, Father. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Father, for another month that you are blessing us with, Father. And as we go into this, this month, Father, please help us to remember those that are less fortunate than us um, and allow us to be a blessing to those around us just as um, others are a blessing to us and just as you have blessed us, Father. So as we finish off 2020, help us to finish strong, um, finish empowered, and always remember why we are continuing forward um, and continue to be encouraged. It's in Jesus' heavenly and wonderful name I pray. Amen. Hey, good morning, Rock Cube Church. Welcome to another fantastic Sunday here at the Rock Cube Church online, man. I know it has been a daunting year for all of us, but what I can tell you is that God is still in the midst of it and God still has good things waiting for us, in store for us, his promises. The word says his word does not return void and every promise that he's spoken before time will still come true for you today and the rest of your life. Listen, we are launching into a brand new sermon series called Perspectives. Perspectives, I mean, what, what is a perspective? A perspective is the way you see things. Truth is, everyone has a different version of what's happening, and it's good to know all of the perspectives so that you can get a better holistic view of the story. This month, we're going to talk about the story of Jesus and his birth. Did you know there are a lot of people involved in that story? There's, there's Joseph, there's Mary, there's the wise men, the magi, and, and of course, there's Jesus. And this month, we're going to talk about all of them. Our first week is today, and I have a special guest with me, a friend, a, a ministry giant, a man who is doing amazing things, not only here at the Fountain of Praise, but outside of here. He's a father, he's a husband, and he's a great friend of mine. So guys, I really want you guys to welcome my good buddy and the young adult pastor here for the Fountain of Praise, none other than Mr. Jeremy Wright. What's up, buddy? How you doing? 
What's up, Will? Good to see you, man. I'm I'm so blessed and honored that you uh that you invited me to be a part. You know, I always tell you, man, anytime you anytime you need me, I'm available. And I know you extend that same courtesy. That's one thing I love about being in ministry here at the Fountain of Praise. And I'm excited to share with you Rock uh, Youth Church today because, you know, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I came out of the Rock Youth Church myself. So I'm a graduate. And so anytime I can come back and uh, be a part of the Rock, I do so uh, if for no other reason than to capture some of that youth, some of that uh, that young vibe from you guys, because, you know, I'm not getting old anytime fast. All <laughs> right. Well, like, okay, so it's it's the holiday season, it's Christmas time, and we always tell the story of Jesus's birth. And that's cool. But man, I want to take this month and unpack it a little bit further. You know, the joy of learning is getting all the details. Let's, let's start. Book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse 18. Fun fact, in all of the synoptic gospels, synoptic meaning synopsis, we find primarily the story of Joseph, right, in the book of Matthew, in the book of Luke. Well, we're going to start in Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 24. I'll read it. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. He, he wanted to hide her. Verse 20 says this, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, marry your wife, for that which is conceived is hers, is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will, have, he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Verse 24, Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth, forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Jesus. This, is, this is a crazy story. I mean, we know that, you know, uh, there's a movie that I love to watch called um, Life. And like, I, I'm the pappy boss, right? They, they say all those funny things. But I think about, here we have this guy named Joseph who has this woman he's engaged to, right? We find out that he doesn't get, he, he's, he's engaged, right? They're not married, right? Quite yet. And he finds out that she's pregnant and he's forced to make a decision. He's forced to make a decision. What, what will he do? Um, th three points today. My first, and I want to unpack this with you, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Wright. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> Pastor Jeremy. Would you? <laughs> Minister Jay. <laughs> Minister Jay. Minister, Minister Jay. Uh, <laughs> we, we, know that, we know that Joseph is a direct descendant of David, right? And, and, and when they mention Jesus, they say that Jesus is the, the son of David and like, like, well, hold on. But Joseph is the father, but they keep saying he's the son of David. I think that's interesting. And my first point, when we talk about who Joseph was in the story of, of Jesus is that Joseph, Joseph was a righteous man. He was a righteous man. He, he, he had a relationship with God. I, I think about the fact that um, you're a dad and I'm a dad. And I, and I like to put it this way. If I trust you with my kids, I trust you with my life. Mm -hmm. And here, here, God, he, you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. His only thing that he had is his one thing. He puts it into the responsibility of this man named Joseph. Why would he give Joseph that much responsibility unless, unless he trusted him? What, what are your thoughts, man? Well, the first thing I, I, I love to point out about the righteousness of Joseph is that sometimes righteousness is not always your first thought. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so one of the, the major components to this piece to me is the fact that uh, Joseph was given, given a hard pill to swallow mm -hmm. um, and he pondered on how he would handle uh, that particular circumstance, which is a lesson for each and every single one of us before you make moves, you take time to you and you consider 
uh, what you are about to do, the Bible says, and Joseph considered mm -hmm. uh, leaving Mary quietly. Yeah. Um, so that consideration speaks volumes to him uh, because where he considered some people would have simply uh, conceded. It would have been like, yo, this lady is having a baby by somebody completely different. I'm out of here. I'm not going to hang around. But Joseph took his time and considered. He thought about it. Not only that, <clears throat> when the angel spoke to him, uh, Joseph listened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I love about this is even though this was Joseph's dream, uh, when the angel spoke, Joseph listened, complied, and never spoke a word back yeah. to the angel. Uh, which which goes to show me that sometimes it's not about what you say, it's about what you do, right? And so right. that right and, and, and right in there, right there, what you say, but how you're listening. Exactly. I like that's how a good you, point, man. How you perceive. Yeah. And, and 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 so so often we see this story of Jesus as just a, a redemption story, but it's more than a redemption story. It's an acceptance story. It's a trial story. It's a struggle story because the whole birth of Jesus was surrounded uh, with uh, a series of, like I'd like to say, a series of unfortunate events, yeah. right? You, you yeah. have th this, uh, this, this, this young lady who's betrothed to this, this older gentleman and she comes up pregnant and she tells him it's God and, and and he has to believe it or not believe it. And then God speaks to him. So what it says to me is that, that it wasn't just Jesus or it wasn't just Mary that was called. Though Joseph isn't mentioned as much in the Bible, Joseph was definitely called and appointed to this position for this, for if no other reason, he could handle it. And I like that because when we, when we think about where we are in life, whether you are a teenager or an adult, is that you are connected to the blessing even if you are not the direct person that brings it forth. Indeed. I like that, but the, in order for us to recognize our position in the blessing, right, is we have to listen. We have mm. to listen. The Bible says uh, in scripture, we understand where it says, be, be quick to listen and, and slow it's to slow rest. To speak. That's slow to speak, right? And that, that as well. And, and when we listen, we'll realize that we have a position in this promise that God has for us. Mm. Joseph, Joseph had to be a part of that story, even though we, we look at the main character of Jesus and we look at the main character of Mary, Joseph was just as influential. So my first point, as we talked about it, about being righteous, and I like how you said that, uh, Minister Jay, is we need to listen. Is that something you struggle with today, guys that are listening? Do you, and, and not just listen to be like, yeah, I heard you, but listen to say, I understood you. Joseph had the chance to walk away from it all, right? But it says he thought about it. I like that because it tells us it's okay to have some uncertainty in life. Joseph thought about it. Like, think about like, whoa, this might not be right, but he listened to the angel. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, and to, and to apply it to each and every single one of our lives, you got to think, Joseph was the first person who had to do what we had to do in order to be under the covenant grace of Jesus Christ, right? Joseph was one of the first people who had to accept mm -hmm. that Jesus was the Messiah and that he was coming into the world to save the world. If, in fact, Joseph did not accept that particular point, was the most important point. If Joseph didn't accept that point, that this is truly ordained by God, this is truly the coming Messiah, this is truly who Moses spoke of. If Joseph did not accept that point, he could have never accepted Jesus. And it's the same for us. Um, as we go through life, as we go through this spiritual walk, things might be difficult. Some things we might not understand, but it's important for us to always accept that we serve the Messiah. We serve the Most High God. We serve Jesus Christ. And because we have accepted that, it gives us privilege to be a part of uh, that kinsmanship, to be a part of that uh, royal priesthood. And so I love the story of Joseph because Joseph reminds me of me. Uh, there were, before I accepted Jesus, there was always these, these questions, right? Is, is this real? Is this, is this, a, is this really uh, uh, how it happened. And, and 
it was not until I accepted that, yes, Jesus is real, and yes, Jesus was born, and yes, Jesus lived, and yes, Jesus died, uh, that gave me access to uh, that saving grace that makes me a Christian today. So I love the story of Joseph, if not for any other reason that one. Right. So the first thing we know, we must listen. The second thing is accept it because you can hear the word. The Bible talks about as well. What man, you know, it talks about building the houses. If you if you they both hear it, the rain falls. But it's the one that built that heard and then built on the correct land that the house withstood the storm. There's everybody. Everybody's listening. But the difference is, what will you do with what you've heard? Mm. Joseph heard it. He accepted it. Right. He accepted it. Then the, here's the next part is the action. Right, because you can hear it, you can believe it, but what are you going to do about it? So we find out in, in in Matthew chapter one, verse twenty four, it says Joseph aroused from his sleep and he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took to him his wife. He said, "Look," he said, "Come here, let, let me holler at you. I, I got something to tell you. So I, I I understand, I see it, which means that sometimes you you may see things late. Other people might recognize it before you." But it doesn't matter when you get it, but that you get it. That you get it. And the way that you get it is going along with the second step of acceptance is consistency. consistency. It's consistency. I think the reason Joseph was able to uh, not only hear the angel, but act upon what the angel said was because he had been consistent with his relationship with God. Do, what do you think about that when it comes to doing what God tells us to do? Uh, wh what part does consistency play with that? And it's a scary thing, right? You're like, uh, I'm not perfect, so how can I? I think the best, the, the, and I tell my young adults, consistency is more about your willingness than your actual action, right? So uh, you might not consistently be right, but if you're consistently trying to be better, you're showing God that I am working, I am uh striving and it's, it's it's similar with joseph when when joseph heard the angel speak to him through the dream and then he woke up and went out and did exactly what the angel told him to do he was saying no i might not completely understand this because babies are typically made in one way right right so right. i might not typically i might not understand what's going on but because i know that you have been consistent I'm going to be consistent. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's the catch that I tell my young adults all the time. We deal with the God that is consistent. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if that's not consistency, I don't know what is. The sun comes up and goes down on a schedule. And I mean, this has been happening since before I was born. You were born, Minister Will, and every uh, rock youth member was born god has been showing us consistency and so with joseph it's like why would i not trust god now and i've been trusting him this far and i'm sure that god did not bring me this far just to turn out uh, uh and not be everything that he told me he was going to be and so yeah man consistency has to be a big part of your growth pattern because how can you <clears throat> if you're not consistently eating you're not growing Mm -hmm. If you're if you're not consistently running, you're not building your endurance. If you're not consistently reading, you're not learning. If you're not consistently breathing, you're not living. Consistency is the catch 22 for everything in life that we are trying to accomplish. It is consistency. You have to have consistency uh, in order to grow. OK, so now let's shift into fifth gear fifth gear. We've been talking about how the story of Joseph relates to us as a people, right? Male and female. But now let's really get into the nitty gritty of this. Let's talk about Joseph as a father. Joseph as a father. We realized that we talked about how he was consistent. We talked about how he listened. We talked about how he, um, he was righteous and all these things. That's cool. That's all well and good. But now let's talk about fathers. Because I understand that there are people who are watching today and listening who, hey, man, listen, I got an issue with that word father. I have an issue with it. And, and, yeah. and we, we look at Joseph, we see a couple of characteristics that I believe we can take something away from. Number one is that Joseph was strong. Joseph was strong. What strength does it take for you to stand with 
a young lady that you're engaged with and she's pregnant and you know you you didn't do it and endure the public ridicule because you know that the promise is greater than the words that people are saying about you. He was strong. What do you think about that? Definitely strong. I talk about that all the time. It's it's actually one of the uh, points that I think the, the church doesn't speak on enough is the fact that Joseph had to be a strong brother uh, to endure uh, what he endured, but his strength speaks to his character, right? Uh, the fact that, again, I say, you don't find words from Joseph in the Bible. That doesn't speak to his weakness. That mm -hmm. speaks to his strength. Uh, because uh, in the book of John, chapter one, verse 45, it says, Philip uh, went to Nathaniel and told Nathaniel, we have found the person Moses uh, and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus and he's the son of Joseph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From Nazareth. Yes. And being that this man has no verbal, no communication in the Bible whatsoever, yet people still recognize Jesus by him shows that, yeah, he was strong enough not only to take on that task, but to embody that task. He was being Jesus, his father here on earth. I like that. Like that's that's strength to say, hey, listen, I'm going to stand, but I'll stand silently. And, right. and, and that's good because the other part that I look at, we talk about the strength of him being a father, and this is for any father that's listening, is, is when we, we, we look at the story of how strong Joseph was as a father is because when Jesus likens his relationship with God, he says that he is like a father. Well, how did Jesus develop this understanding of what a father was unless he experienced a father? You don't get a choice in your father, but you can choose your mentor, someone who uh, helps to mold you. And and I like that that word mentor because yes, Joseph was Jesus's stepfather, but let's be real, he had to be his mentor too. We identify Jesus as a carpenter. Right. That's what we say. We say Jesus was a carpenter, but that's because Joseph was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. That means that when Joseph was cutting wood, Jesus was hanging around the saw table saying, what's that? And how does that work? And what's this? And how does that work? And though Joseph never spoke to us, it is clear that he was speaking to Jesus because Jesus was strong. And not only was Jesus strong, he was very uh, stiff in his convictions when Joseph and Mary found Jesus had been left back. That's where right? I was going. <laughs> yeah, there it is. And, and Mary spoke and said, uh, you, we were scared. And it's mm -hmm. almost like Jesus tried to appeal to the sensibility of Joseph in that moment when he said, well, well didn't you know that I would be about my father's business? Right, ha ha right. Ha hasn't my earthly father shown me this example? And haven't I shown you time after time again that this is what I'm about? So though, though Jesus didn't speak, his actions there spoke volumes because there was no chastisement from Joseph to Jesus there. Oh, I understand completely what you have to do, Jesus. We were nervous, but now that you spoke, we get it. I want you to understand that, man, you've got a father in heaven who promised to never leave you or forsake you. And maybe you don't have an actual father that's in your home. And maybe you have a, a mentor or a stepfather that's in your life that you can still grow and learn from them. Minister Jeremy put it really best that the three things that we must understand from this is we've got to be good listeners, right? Number two, we've got to adhere to what we've been told. And then number three, we've got to move on what we've been told. Joseph heard that his wife was pregnant. He adhered to what he was told. And then he moved. We've got to listen, guys. We've got to listen, ladies. We've got to pay attention to what God is telling us to do, but also we must move forward with it. And as we go back to the story of fathers, man, we've got a good, good father. And the Bible says he does not deny his children good things. And so even as we walk into the Christmas and the holiday season, God will provide exactly what you need. He's a good father and he's been good to you. All right, it's communion time here at the Rock Cube Church. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11, let every man examine himself before he takes this bread and this cup. I challenge you now, before we take communion, consider, do you have somebody that you need to forgive? Or maybe is there someone you need to ask for forgiveness from? We can't ask God to forgive us when we have not forgiven others. Take a moment and do that right now.
Okay, let's take our communion. Paul writes, For I have received of the Lord that which I have also delivered, that on the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks. God, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being real. God, we thank you for everything you're doing, even in this season and the things to come. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. The Bible says he gave thanks and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Say it after me, his body was broken just for me. And on that same night, he took the cup, saying, this is my blood shed for the remission of sins. We also believe that in the Bible says that by the stripes of his son, Jesus Christ, we're healed. And we're believing for healing for our nation, that God is providing healing even now. So repeat these words after me. By his stripes, I am healed. His blood was shed just for me. You may now take the cup. And then the Bible says, and now we are a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are becoming new. This is a new season. This is a new month. This is a new start. Let's walk forward with God in our lead. In Jesus name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week here at the Rock Cube Church.